Hello, and welcome to the National Post Politics Bureau. I'm Stuart Thompson, and today we're here with Goldie Hyder, the President and CEO of the Business Council of Canada. Um, Goldie, I know like us, you're bracing for the federal budget next week. Um, but <laughs> There's I want a whole to start... week to go of announcements. <laughs> Imagine what <laughs> yeah. comes now. <laughs> uh, I want to start more generally, though. We're in kind of strange times right now. Um, what is the mood in corporate Canada right now? Well, I don't know if it's, if it's strange as much as it is serious. Uh, I think what you're seeing in the C-suites of not just Canada, but around the world, I've been traveling a lot and talking to C-suite uh, executives in different parts, is there's sort of three things that jump out at you. One is the geopolitical lens. There's just mm -hmm. so much happening uh, geopolitically, and it's not just about the wars. Uh, it's about the post-COVID realignment that's taking place. A lot of this talk about, you know, friendshoring and nearshoring, and we need to make sure, I think the rest of the world wants to make sure that it doesn't become America shoring, for starters. Yeah. The rest of us get the scraps, they get the, you know, the gold. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, that it can't be a code for protectionism because that's not what we need for growth. We need pro-trade, pro-multinational, uh, globalization. All these words are loaded for a lot of people, but you know what? It's been pretty good for elevating a lot of people out of poverty yeah. and growing our economy. So that's that geopolitical bucket. I can go on to that for the whole segment. The second one is the economic anxiety that's out there. And that is uh, driven by, you know, the sticky inflation. Uh, it's exacerbated by the fact that the governments and democracies and in other parts of the world post-COVID have become addicted to spending. Yeah. It's almost like they've forgotten math. Yeah. that we can just you know, keep spending and, and subsidize and support and all noble ideas. But you gotta, you gotta grow the economy, you gotta grow the revenues to be able to redistribute it, you gotta first create it. We've gotten away from that. And you would add to the economic thing, um, sort of the, the whole regulatory predictability and certainty. It used to be that in democracies, you could say, okay, if I went through a regulatory process, it, you know, elections happen, but you're not gonna have black, white every two to four years, depending on yeah. minority majorities. We're no longer in that place. I mean, Keystone mm -hmm. Pipeline was canceled within six hours. The president taking off is going here, gone. Yeah. You're like, what just happened? <laughs> we, we spent hundreds of millions of dollars in getting the social license and the regulatory approvals, bringing the indigenous communities on board. It's gone. So we can't, can't operate in that environment. Business needs predictability, certainty, and confidence, and it's sorely, uh, sorely lacking. So that's a high risk uh, from an economic perspective. And then the last piece, very quickly, is sort of the, 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 uh, the, the, the populism piece, if you will. Mm -hmm. the, the politics of left and right. It's too often seen to be right. With all due respect, there's a lot of left-wing populism yeah. as well, and it's equally bad in the cases of right-wing populism. People are generally speaking centrists. They're people of what my father likes to call people of radical middle. Yeah. They're a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but they're, not, but they're not way out there. But what we're seeing is populism is creating an environment for very bad public policy to come about. Yeah. And there are consequences to that. Yeah. What are the stakes here? Does this mean less investment in Canada? Does it mean people leaving the country? Uh, what do you think? Well, look, um, I, I speak to CEOs on a regular yeah. basis, and they have an accountability to a board, a board that's often a multinational board of some kind and probably heavily American in, 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 their, in their makeup, and they have to make a case. Uh, there's all these countries out there in the world that are becoming attractive for capital. Why Canada? Yeah. And if you're looking at Canada, and believe me, you won't find a prouder Canadian than me and my members who love this country and want it to be you know, strong and growing and competitive. But uh, capital has, uh, you know, doesn't have that emotion. Yeah. <laughs> capital has a behavior that's very simple. Where can I go to make one dollar two? Where do I have the regulatory particular instability? What have we built in this country? Tell me what we've built that's long lasting, that kind of infrastructure that built the fabric of this nation. If we were founded today, we would be a European Union. There would be no national highway. There would be no national railway. We would be 10 provinces and three territories and would be the, like I said, a union. Yeah. We have to return to building things. And through building things, you get growth, you get building prosperity, you know, and building an economy that's sustainable for the long haul, as opposed to what we're seeing now, which is we'll borrow our way and spend on things. That's unsustainable. One day, you know, that will come home to roost. Yeah. We already seen this movie in 1993. We're trying to actually protect those programs, the things that we've created for Canadians who need that help in economic uncertainty. The worst thing you can say to them is, here it is. Oh, well, now I can't afford it, so I'm taking it away from you. We have to have both sides of the ledger, and I think we're not seeing enough of that, certainly from this government, who has no issue running up deficits and debts. Yeah, and so on the populism side, um, we I think we were used to the left going after corporate profits and CEOs. <laughs> we are now seeing it from the Conservative Party of Canada. Yeah. Um, first of all, what do you make of that? But secondly, do you 
understand where it's coming from. We've had high inflation. People are seeing yeah, corporate, like blah, blah, profits goes up. Yeah. Do you understand why people are annoyed? Um, look, I, I do, but we can't allow uh, the, 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 what makes, as I said, for good politics to create bad public, bad public policy. And, and we can't allow anyone, anywhere on any side of the ledger to get away with what's not true. Yeah. The facts have to be brought to the center of this. The facts have to be brought on the energy transition, which we've tried to do at the Business Council, say, look, the world's carbon emissions are going up. We can do something about it, but we're not having an adult conversation about it. Yeah. Same thing when it comes to this issue of everybody's a workers' party now. And I ask them with the greatest respect, where do those workers work? <laughs> Where do they work? And everybody's an SME party now. You know how SMEs exist and COVID showed us this. They are the supply chain of large businesses. Yeah. So if we're gonna go after the businesses that create the wealth, we have a government right now who's targeting profits, including as you said, in the grocery sector. There are eight different grocery chains out there. Uh, three of them are major multinational. You might've heard of them, Amazon, Walmart, and Costco. Uh, these margins are like 5% in this industry and we're gonna be, and they're probably gonna target this in the budget. Some kind of excess profits tax and stuff. When did profits in a free market enterprise and a free market economy become a dirty word? These profits emerge how? After the employers have taken the risk to set up their businesses, after they paid the employees, after they have matched the employees' taxes where they're obligated to do so, after they've invested in the, in the business itself, the infrastructure of the business, the innovation of the business, the R&D of the business, after they've done their CSR, ESG, DEI, mm -hmm. after they've done their philanthropy. And yes, sorry to say, some profits remain. And what happens to those profits? More often than not, they're given back to Canadians whose pension funds, whose TFSAs, whose RSPs and other things are invested in major Canadian companies that are trying to grow in a very competitive global environment. Yeah. Um, so we have the tax side. Um, the other way to pay for things is to grow the economy yeah. and to get growth going. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> what, so what do you think is the best thing we could do to get economic growth going? Well, this seems uh, somewhat uh, cute and simplistic, but it starts with confidence. Yeah. It goes back to what I said earlier. If you build confidence, if you create the environment, the regular, the number one issue from our members when I survey them on a regular basis is what's causing you, you know, sort of anxiety and why are you holding back on investing? Regulatory unpredictability. We have a government that has now for years been saying we want to identify projects that are in the national interest to help decarbonize or help our allies decarbonize. And we said, great, we support that. Which projects, what are the rules? They set a target of December 31st, 2023 to tell us. Well, it's April 2024, we still don't know, and we may not know for, for, for a long time to come. Yeah. So it's disingenuous, but what it also does is it speaks to two problems. The government having an implementation problem, even in their own ideas. I last wrote to the prime minister and I said, I'm not lobbying for anything here. You said you wanna do these three things. Yeah. We agree with you. Let's figure out how you're gonna get the fiscal anchor right, because you're spending too much money. And mon to your earlier question, if you see in a country a government that's not concerned by its fiscal position, all you see are taxes on the horizon, whether they're corporate taxes or worse, employee taxes, because we spend a lot of time talking about capital being competitive. You know what's even more competitive? Talent. Yeah. They're shopping. This thing called the internet's actually all over the world. And they're looking and they're saying, what are your tax rates here? What are your tax rates if I'm in Austin? What are they if I'm in California? What are they? And people are shopping. So we'll always have people coming here, but are they the best? Are they the smartest? Are they who we want and need? We won't know. So we have to take a competitive attitude to all of these issues, or we're going to have the, the, the coming home, uh, the chickens coming home to roost, as yeah. I said, and we're trying to avoid that. Okay. We have a time for one more question on the sort of general fiscal situation. Yes. And I'm curious how businesses feel about the way the balance sheet looks right now and do you think Canadians should be worried about this? I, not only do I think they should be, I think they are. Mm. If there's one thing I'm sure about is never underestimate the collective wisdom of the Canadian people. They are a smart group of people and they get math. They get math better than our governments do and by governments I mean federal and provincial. Like we're seeing runaway spending. Yeah. Whether you're a liberal or a conservative or an NDP or everybody feels like since COVID it's just money. Yeah. No it's not just money, it's our money, it's the people's money and you're the, you're the the ones who are you know, arbitrating and how to allocate it, the math has to add up. Every family makes decisions in their family about how to get their math to add up. And they have every right to expect that their government will do that. Over the last four or five years, we've had a government whose fiscal targets keep moving. The, 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 even the nomenclature changes from a fiscal anchor to a guardrail to yeah. something else now. You have to build credibility by doing what you said you're going to do. This government has a significant spending problem and it is exposing Canadians to risk because you're spending more on borrowing than you are on healthcare transfers. Where are we when that's happening? And this is while inflation is sticky, and who knows what crisis is around the corner? 
Are you ready for that? We're not, we're ill prepared and Canadians will pay the price for that. And I'm telling you, they know this. Okay, thank you so much, Goldie. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.